just it's a really amazing collaborative experience being in a multi-room facility. But I would imagine being in that particular facility, especially while the Beatles were there, everybody must have wanted to work with the Beatles or get in the room and say hi or something. So there had to have been an incredible atmosphere of just like everything you were doing was cool. It, yeah, but uh, nobody came by. Very really? few, very few I, I won't say nobody, but very few people came by most of the time uh it, it it was working one i think the reason that i got the gig at, at uh emi was within the questioning during my interview like they they the beatles were my favorite band they would it was before they went to the states like three weeks before they went to the states so they hadn't broken that market yet but everywhere else they were huge uh but something in the midst of the interview one of the guys interviewing me said, uh, who is your favorite band? And I, I tell the story that something deep within me, way down there, said, do not say the Beatles. <laughs> so I said to Dave Clark, five. Which is not a bad choice. Well, they, they looked at each other and, and said, well, why the Dave Clark five? And once again, I listened to that deep down voice. And it told me to say along the lines of, I'm sure it wasn't quite this way, but it's, well, I think the addition of the keyboard and the sax gives them a totally different sound from the usual two guitar, bass and drum bag. <laughs> now, the, the whole point was that they wanted someone that was interested in sound. They didn't want someone that would be going, trying to take photographs, getting autographs. They didn't, they didn't want a fanboy. They wanted someone interested in sound. And I think right. I got the gig. Oh, that's brilliant. That, well, your deep down voice is a, it's oh, a good voice. I, it's kept me going for, through the last 50 years, believe me. So one really quick Beatles thing, um, just in terms of the sort of people they were as they're approaching this absolute gigantic stardom, because as you mentioned, they were about to go to the States and at that point it was supernova. But my wife who's sitting next to me was saying that they actually played a gig in Worcester which is not a town that anybody plays. You play Birmingham and then you skip everything around it and go play Bristol. Yeah. But they played it in Worcester after they had already exploded because it was booked. And yeah. they were like, well, we're going to keep our, our word yeah. and go play. But they were one of the hardest working bands I've ever come across. Because it would be playing gigs in places like that across the country. On their days off, they'd be at EMI recording, then immediately out on the road again. That one of the reasons, there are two reasons that the Beatles were as good as they were. One, obviously, is the talent of all four of them. All of them incredible in what they did. But the other one is the work ethic. I think that whole thing of being in uh, Hamburg and playing three shows a night, six days a week, yeah. it, it made them a really great tight band. And that that how many bands would do that these days? No, it's too much work. You yes, know, you stay home and work on your record in your living room instead. Well, yeah. And you're, you're lucky if they'll play a, a, a gig the day after playing a gig. Normally it's, oh, we're going to have at least one or two days off. We've got to rest our voices and that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, it was